All right. Request everyone to turn on their videos so that we can see who all are with us. Today, we are going to have a very good session. We are talking about sign language interpreting, not just hearing interpreters, but deaf interpreters as well. So tune in and yeah, this is, we're gonna start. First of all, I'd like to thank everyone, our participants, and we want to welcome Dr. Renuka Rameshan. Can we please spotlight Dr. Renuka? Thank you. And we would like to welcome Arun Rao. Can we please spotlight Arun? All right. Before we begin, we'd just like to quickly have a short introduction. So welcome again, everyone. The program today is uh, going to be about the experiences of WASLI 2023 conference. WASLI stands for World Association of Sign Language Interpreters. You would know that this year at South Korea in, Je in Jeju, we did have the WFT conference as well as the WFTYS Youth Camp, but there was also the interpreting conference from WASLI. Just want to also add that today we do have sign language interpreters who will be providing access to sign language and voiceovers. We also have subtitles. All right, getting back. So for the WASLI conference, we do have our uh, presenters, but before that, let's have a quick introduction. Dr. Renuka. Also, just quickly want to ask the preference for sign language or spoken language. I would like to sign. Yes, I would like to sign. So all through the meeting, right? Interpreter would voice. Perfect. Thank you. Great. I am Renuka Rameshan. That is my sign name. I am the president of Association of Sign Language Interpreters, Asli. Yeah, sorry, you were saying something, Dr. Renuka. Did I interrupt? No worries. Yeah, if you have the entire session, I will add. Great. All right. Next. Of course, thank you so much for your introduction. And Arun Rao, uh, what is your preference? Would you like to sign or speak? I think I would prefer to speak since Renuka already is signing. One will sign, one will speak. Probably better. Otherwise, the interpreters will have to be voicing for the entire duration. I don't want to do that. A lot of pressure. All right, great. So your introduction. Uh, <laughs> um, short introduction. My name is Arun Rao. I've been uh, interpreting since 1993. I worked in Doordarshan for 11 years, starting 2004 to 1994 to 2005. On the way, I was the founding president of the NAD in India the founding group of the World Association of Sign Language Interpreters in 2002. Uh, was the founding president of the Indian Association of Sign Language Interpreters in 2007. And I have been working in an organization called the Deaf Way and the Deaf Way Foundation between 1996 and 2015 published a magazine for the deaf and deaf issues in the country for 20 years called The Deaf Way and did research on sign language for the Ramakrishna Mission project, researching sign language in 24 cities in Northern India and being part of the working group, I created the book of ISL and the Ramakrishna Mission. I've also been active in sign language access PILs in the High Court in Delhi and a lot of advocacy movement to make sure that the deaf people and the deaf community of India is supported properly. The Deaf Way organization was the one that created the project, the project report for the ISLRTC, which is now functioning in Delhi. 
that came out of my office. But I have the original documents with me. So I've been involved for a long, long time with deaf people. I took a break for about seven years, went to Africa. I was doing wildlife safaris and photography. Again, working with deaf people, deaf tourists who came to me from Germany, from Brazil, from America, from all over Europe, from France, from Philippine Islands. So learned a lot of international sign during that time. This is my third visit to Vasli in Korea. And I've been working for Signable as head of marketing and international project development for the past one and a half years. Great. That was indeed quite an introduction. I think good enough material for a book to be published very soon. I hope so. Well, many people don't realize um, the extent of work done by Deaf Way and by myself and by the Deaf people who worked with me. So many wonderful Deaf guys work with me as well. So I want to make sure it's clear here. Absolutely. Totally agree on that. Okay. So the sign language interpreter would continue to be uh, on the spotlight because, uh, of course, both preferences of signing and speaking. And we would take questions and answers one by one, right? We'll take turns. So the first question is, of course, to both of you. Um, this year at the Vasli conference, uh, was it your first experience? And we can also add, uh, should I start? Yeah, yeah, Dr. Renuka. Was it first time for you? Yeah, yeah, it was the first time for me. Arun, this was? Third time. Third time, third time, yeah. So Korea was the third time, second and first. You were at the other Vasli conferences, Spain, or South Africa and Korea, okay. Wow, okay. So, of course, Dr. Renuka first time and Arun third time. Dr. Renuka, what did you imagine Vasli would be like? Do you have like something in your mind? And of course, when you reached, you know, what was the experience like? What did you feel? And the same question to Arun as well. I'm sure you would already know what Vasli uh, looks like or what, what Vasli is, but what was your experience this time in Korea? So we could start with Dr. Renuka. Great. So... I think I didn't, you know, I had no expectations as such. I was almost about to cancel. Uh, I th I thought the plan was not, not working out and I was not able to confirm my uh, journey and all of that. But luckily, they chose uh, me to be a uh, presenter. They chose my paper. And, you know, I had to like uh, hurry. It was just two weeks to the uh, uh, time of the conference, I had to do all the bookings and it was quite hectic. Uh, of course, the language part, you know, how would we uh, manage the international sign? How would I learn so quickly? So I was a little apprehensive about that, but, you know, I felt really at home when I went there. It was, it was not that different. I felt very comfortable uh, because there were, the deaf community there, right? And we were communicating in sign language. I felt a lot of uh, similarity. And of course, there were deaf people from very different uh, parts of the uh, world. But the thing was, there was this kind of, uh, you know, mutual understanding, you know, the deaf, deaf, same kind of a thing. The sign language interpreters were also there. Obviously, the experiences were varied, but we all tried to, you know, support each other. But I really felt at home. I was really comfortable. Uh, I I actually, you know, uh, feeling whether I would be able to uh, sign IS or would sign ISL or ASL. I didn't don't think that came up into my uh, mind at all. I was not, even, you know, never felt uh, this kind of uh, hiccups. 
and I was very able uh, to communicate with all of that. And I think I had a really great, joyful, enjoyable uh, learning experience. Awesome. Thank you, Dr. Renuka. So, Arun, how was your experience third time uh, going to the Vasli conference? And also comparatively, you know, the first, second, do you think the third one was a little more advanced or you felt the themes and the things were pretty same? Yeah. Well, Spain the first time, that was the first real major Wasli conference was in 2007 in Spain. And uh, we had been working on Wasli and the, the you know, <clears throat> bylaws and all those things. We just finished the bylaws of the Wasli in Spain four days before, like we were there for four days before the actual conference happened. In three days, we worked the board members. All of us worked on the worked on the bylaws, finished all of them, confirmed everything, so we could present it at the conference. It was a two day conference uh, in uh, Segovia in Spain, which is a beautiful old city outside Madrid, about I think two hours. Maybe. The thing with that place was, I think, my first experience in a in a larger world. I had been to WFD as well before, but. Uh, just to have an interpreter conference. And one, I remember one case where there was somebody doing Khmer Sign Language from Cambodia. It was a deaf woman doing Khmer Sign Language, a German volunteer who learned Khmer Sign Language in Cambodia from her, in fact. He was doing German Sign Language. The German Sign Language interpreter was doing International Sign Language. The International Sign Language interpreter uh, was uh, voiced by somebody else in English and the uh, English was translated into Spanish because we had about 50 or 60 Spanish people had joined since they were there. So imagine there's one deaf person to a hearing person to another hearing person to another hearing person to the voice to the Spanish. It was like a six-step interpreting, you know, event and I was watching her present about what she's doing in in the in Cambodia. It was like for me, I think that was the most iconic experience of my life just to see five, six steps of interpreting in the same like he she was just signing. I would go like, one, two, three, four, five, and then Spanish on the or headphone on the headphone had Spanish. It was it was <laughs> something I'd never seen before. It was amazing to see. The other thing, always met a lot of people, many, 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 many contacts after that. I spent a week in England after that meeting other deaf people and hearing people I had met at Wasley. Same thing happened in Durban, South Africa, the presentations. Sometimes they are a little bit advanced for us because they're presenting at a master's and tertiary level interpreting research, which, you know, we don't have the background to understand it at the level at which it needs to be understood. But it was good to see that, you know, people are getting PhDs in interpreting and doing sex, sex, sectional interpreting. This time, a lady was presenting. She has done a PhD on team interpreting. How a deaf person and a hearing person interpreting as a team did a PhD on the process of how it works. You know. So the amount of research and the amount of thought and the amount of, uh, you know, effort that goes in to interpreting it's always wonderful to see that uh, profession is actually a profession, not just somebody doing like this. I remember many times I was told in the 90s in India, ah, tum, you come here, haath hilate na, tum haath hilalo, ya pe ya ke, haath hilao. Or they will ask me, ye kya haath hilare ho, why are you doing like this? And that's what they, didn't understand. they understand about our profession in India. The understanding among the hearing people in every, is, every, is so low. It's a very poor level, but definitely it was good. I thought the Jeju conference had uh, less international, uh, how do you say, uh, participants, but very many Southeast Asian participants. Malaysia, Singapore, Indonesia, Philippines, Hong Kong, Macau, Japan. You know, this Eastern side was very well represented. Because Korea is close to everybody here. When we didn't have it in Europe before, the Europeans were all there, but there was nobody from the Asia. So it was like, it's difficult, I guess, to find a good location, timing, everything. 
you know. But I was good. I was presenting. I presented at 2007 and 11, and this time as well, I presented a poster. It was called, You Say You Are a What? Because when I go and tell people I'm an interpreter, they're like, what? What's an interpreter? Oh, they don't even know the word interpreter. So <laughs> uh, went over India's progress between 93 and 2003. It was a good, it was 23. It was a good uh, uh, experience to go there, of course, and spend time and learn how to spell my name in Korean spelling alphabet, which is like, uh, you know, so to say Arun Rao in Korean would be That's Arun Rao in Korean. <laughs> I was like, what? <laughs> I'm just like doing <laughs> Yeah, it's difficult. Uh, I, I just barely remember. Somebody made a video for me. So I was just looking at the video before the Zoom to remember how it is done. <laughs> Hard to understand how they would spell. Imagine spelling like this. <laughs> you know, when they spell A, B, C, D already, it's so difficult. Sometimes I miss always, you know. Imagine you're doing like this, like this, like this. Then you're doing like this. Then then you do like this, like this. <laughs> it was pretty crazy. crazy. But it was a wonderful time to meet all old, so many old friends of mine. Zane, Chris, Deborah Russell, Elizabeth from uh, all previous presidents and board members, Nigel Howard. A lot of people I know from the past, and we worked together for those years before 2007, also the board members, so many was there. It was really fun. Good to meet everybody, renew contacts and so on. I think Deepak is frozen. Go. Better. I'm sorry. Sorry. Uh, a little patchy here, the internet. Anyway, thank you. Perfect. That is great. Time for the second question to Arun. So the question is that uh, at, at the conference, do the attendees use sign spoken language? I mean, both or sign language at the conference? Oh, sorry. So, uh, no, no. The question is, ah, so the thing is, uh, irrespective of whether the deaf is hearing interpreters, what language were they using? Were they mixing sign and spoken or they were using only sign? So during the uh, program, of course, I understand that, you know, they would be interpreting and sign language would be there on stage. But in the free time when they were mingling, what was the language mostly? Um... What we call simcom, no simcom. Uh, sort of which? We never did simcom, never. I let the interpreters change. Somebody has a spotlight there. Hi, Manisha. Um. Yeah. So simcom. Simultaneous communication, spoken and sign. I think we nobody did that. We would just meet people and sign first. And if there's nobody around, you know, sometimes you speak something, sometimes you don't speak. Very rarely, you're only talking. Rarely. Most of the time, there's deaf people everywhere around you, so you sign all the time. It's just a normal Sorry, thing. sorry, sorry. Just a second. I guess the interpreter is uh, Manisha. Sure. The internet is uh, freezing. Yeah, freezing. Yeah. Can we try now? No, it's still freezing. She's still freezing. Uh, Manisha, now better? Yeah, please carry on. Arun? So, like I said, we don't do SimCom at all. Everybody just signs most of the time. If I'm addressed in speech, I would reply. 
but also just give a few signs in case somebody's you know deaf persons are watching around somebody want to join the conversation sorry sorry i don't sorry uh, no no manisha back if it's a problem so no manisha freezing here yeah. okay i'll just check my connection again yeah let me just spotlight maybe the place manisha you could try to other place that will help yeah sorry arun while manisha checks uh, changes the place you can continue sure um <clears throat> basically you would use sign language all the time you know basically and uh, some some situations you don't know how to sign it then you would see if they understood english some of them don't understand english you're talking to korean hearing people they don't speak english they have to sign to them it was wonderful you know i remember the first time this happened to me in 1995 in wfd in vienna to be eight of us sitting standing and talking everybody is signing and then somebody says okay i have to go and you're like huh you hearing you know like, oh, you're hearing you're hearing fun all eight of us are all hearing and we are all signing <laughs> yeah so it have been all so many time like that so you would, you would always sign you didn't even know if the person in front of you was hearing or deaf and some people ask you you are hearing deaf no you are hearing then they speak to you but usually you would sign start off with sign awesome awesome yeah makes sense so you know it it was the place where uh, you know it was not like the deaf or the hearing world it was like a signing world yeah. signing world yeah hearing deaf people absolutely great right going uh, on the next question is for dr renuka so at the conference what was something which was really impactful you know a big big uh, learning for you at the vasco conference actually there were many actually there, no problem we are all uh, all ears all eyes we could take down things for notes so i like to share a few so of course i was really really excited because i was really wanting to pick up a lot of new things so we have a lot of experience of working in india and the situation in india but Uh, i also wanted to meet interpreters working in other places and i, I had a lot of questions to learn you know uh, what their situations are like interpreters from different countries um for example mostly i do a lot of legal interpreting uh court interpreting and uh, that was my presentation also the challenges regarding court and legal interpreting and i wanted to discuss the system of court interpreting in other countries and that is what i was also interested in learning there were actually uh, many meetings many people i met who were themselves uh, working in the court they were court interpreters period so and also there would be a deaf lawyer with whom there would be a hearing interpreter that was the system they had been working for almost 10 years 15 years the deaf lawyer in an office and having an interpreter all the time going for them uh, for the hearings that was a wow moment for me right that was something i had never heard before and uh, made a lot of sense and i started asking them questions about the system you know basically what kind of awareness do the court know about the policy about the sign language interpreting and how they uh, work all these things out and having a hearing interpreter and a deaf lawyer in that system and even at the high court level the there is a deaf person involved in the legal team you know a psychologist is there and a deaf expert is also there along with that a sign language interpreter so four people team at the higher court in these country you know some of the countries that was the system so something really unique which in india we are like really really lagging behind so i was like wow and that was something which really uh, made me think that this is so nice we need to work so much to transform the situation in the country and have more accessibility in terms of legal interpreting in the country and uh, you know the fact is that there were deaf people who were so empowered they were in the team 
and uh, really qualified, highly educated, the, having a deaf interpreter, having a deaf lawyer, having a hearing interpreter working together, deaf and hearing interpreters working together. If there was a case from a deaf person, so, you know, the fact is, you know, uh, you know how sign language also, uh, the skills and the fluency part is also varied. So there would be a deaf expert supporting. But before that, there would be a review, right? Which kind of an interpreter, uh, there would be a deaf interpreter or a deaf signer who would communicate with this person who is uh, petitioning. So they would then be able to understand that no, a hearing interpreter would not be fit for this deaf person because the sign language is very different. So they would have a deaf signer, that person. So, you know, this there was this kind of support system and uh, the deaf interpreter supporting the deaf petitioner. Wow. You know? So, it really made sense. So, this is something in India, you know, we should really hope to achieve and work towards. Hopefully, this can be done. So when we talk about the interpreters, you know, all over India. So in India, we don't have specification where if uh, the interpreter wants to go in the medical field, you know, or in the academic field, they have to have take the interpreting work in all of the sectors. That's how their quality interpretation goes down, right? So if we would have such specific field, then interpreter can choose their own specific areas, right? But right now we have very... A few interpreters, there, there's a dearth of interpreters. That's why we don't have much of the uh, interpreters who can work in specific areas. Let me answer that. Uh, just like to say, uh, of. Uh, sorry, just wanted to in, uh, in, in, inform the interpreting part. Manisha is going to be voicing and I'll be signing, sort of signing. Yeah. So, Dr. Renuka, when Dr. Renuka, I'm sorry, not sign, uh, speaking, but when you'll be signing, uh, Manisha will take on the voiceover, and Arun, when you're speaking, Saurabh will uh, sign for you. Very good plan. Just wanted to say, you know, oftentimes, uh, with your question about interpreting and the domain specific interpreting, like academia, court, medical, you know, different uh, theater, so many different domains are there. So what happens with us is uh, the deaf community in India, the total number of deaf people who are signing is about, uh, not signing, deaf people who require sign language is about 18 million people total. We have been interpreting and we have a course for interpreting, purely interpreting. I think six years ago after ISLRTC started, we have uh, six years ago, the course. Now, what happens is we are looking at countries which have a course, for example, a very common comparison is made with the United States. And uh, the United States started a deaf degree program in the year 1882. They had a deaf people going to college and degrees and I was interpreting at a degree level, 140 years ago. So, whatever we are doing now in India has to reflect also the community that we are serving as interpreters in India. The deaf community also, the leadership of the deaf community also has to understand that it's an evolutionary process. You can't switch a button on and start everything. It doesn't happen like that. It will take time. It will take effort. Right now, uh, I was talking to somebody in Aliyavarjan, Calcutta. The Disley course for two years in her batch of last year, they passed out in December. The course had three interpreters, three classes, three uh, students. The current year, the people who are passing out, there are two students. Two students. So if we need, I was 
put a PIL in the court, I remember in 2008 or 9, I forget now, I said there should be a post in government agencies, in the government department, which says post of interpreter equal to trained graduate teacher. You know, there's a post, TGT, trained graduate teacher. So that's a basic salary, this increment, flana, dimkana, DL, PL, dinner's allowance, etc. There's a setup, as a post. And they said, the court said to me, the, the responding, the Department of Social Welfare said, uh, sorry, Department of Personal and Training said, we have stopped creating any more post in the government. No more post, only contract basis. So our response was, 15 years ago, there was no Department of Information Technology. You have made a national ministry and a state ministry with thousands, tens of thousands of people, and they are taking salary. There is a post, computer programmer, computer website manager, whatever, whatever. There are so many posts you have made. Social Welfare Department requires only one post, interpreter post, if you give us, Government has to have interpreters in every hospital, in government school, in the government college, in the railway station, in the police station, in the court, in the primary health care centers, in the district welfare centers, in the commissioner's office, all the state commissioner's office, even the chief commissioner of disability in Delhi at that time had no interpreter. They asked me to join as interpreter there. They said salary will be 5,000 rupees. 5,000 rupees they were going to give me to be interpreter, full-time interpreter, sit in the CCPD the entire day. This was offered to me by the CCPD at that time. Can you imagine? So the understanding of interpreters as a profession in the country, the government don't understand. They are saying anything they want to say. They give me an interpreter with five years experience. The coach is only five years old. How can we have five years experience of working? If your coach only is five or six years old, give me faculty with 15 years experience, but there is no course for interpreting. There is no, uh, this thing for interpreting 15 years. You have to have a master's in linguistics for 15 years back, but 15 years back, there was no available master's in linguistics for deaf people or hearing people. So the government has to understand the situation. We can't make them understand. Hopefully we can make interpreters understand and deaf people understand leadership here, who can realize and say, oh, wow, these are the problems we are facing. Now the people go to Disley classes, they come out after two years for Disley course. In two years, what can they learn about interpreting? How much interpreting do they know? I met these people who graduated last December. I was, I met a number of uh, people. I was in a training, small training program for them as well. I see them after one year, nine months of sign language training, interpreting training, they know 20% of what they must know. Who has been teaching these people? Who is the instructors there? There are deaf instructors there. There are hearing instructors there. But after one, after three semesters and a half, they hardly manage, hardly. So it's a shame for us. Our courses are so poorly run. So managed so badly. And I told you, there is no incentive. Why should I become an interpreter? I can get an MCA, BCA, and get an IT job and work in Dell or IBM or Infosys or somewhere else. I can go there. Why I must become an interpreter? Because when I told you, there was three in two years, three class, three people in the class. Again, next two years, two people. Now there are two people in the class. Last year, there was one girl from, Beng from Bengal and two girls from Mizoram. You have gone back to Mizoram. Three people. So the, our interpreting as a profession, as a education system for interpreter, everything has to be expanded far more. It will take 40 years. I will be dead and gone. So this at this stage, if we say, oh, interpreters are not working very well because they do not know this, they do not know that. I agree with you. They do not know who is going to teach them. If I say I will teach interpreters how to do this and that and the other thing, somebody will question me. Who are you to teach them? 
but we have so much 30 years of experience of interpreting i can teach something okay fine i cannot i do not want to teach anybody you call somebody from america to teach them they cannot teach at the level where we want to level to teach they can teach master's degree to how to become phd level they can take degree level to become master's level they cannot tell kindergarten level to start the game they do not know how to do this so whatever you know we have to evolve everything becomes a step by step if you plant the seed today you don't get a mango tomorrow it takes 15 years you have to wait 15 years for mangoes if you want mango today no sorry you have only leaves today you planted it last year, two years back, five years back. You're not going to get mangoes now. It will take 15 years. So I agree with you 100%, Deepak. Quote, big problem. Deaf interpreters. Right now, we cannot even have hearing interpreters. If I go and tell somebody, okay, I'm going to bring deaf interpreter, he will say, are you mad? How will a deaf man hear the microphone? He says, no, no, I will hear the microphone and I will sign for him and Deepak will stand on the stage and he will sign for everybody. But every 15 minutes we will change. So instead of two interpreters, I have to pay for four interpreters. Go to hell. This is the first word they will say to me. This is the first word they will say. Go to hell. I am paying for two interpreters. Already I don't want to pay for this one. Now you are saying I am going to bring two more deaf people. There will be four interpreters. How will I pay for this one? So our awareness is not at that level. You and me and Renuka, Sora, 5, 10, 1,500 people know all these things. We have to worry about 18 million deaf people who don't have sign language, first of all. We have to worry about our 2,500 schools where they are still saying, bah, 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 bah. We have to worry about all the BA courses, teachers who do not know sign language. There are 1,000 things to worry about. Now, how many fights you want to fight at one time? Am I going to become Bruce Lee and fight 50 people? Is it possible? It cannot. I am not Bruce Lee. I have been fighting a long time, many people. But I make, I'm trying to help everybody understand the issue here. Teachers is a problem. Children is a problem. Language deprivation is a problem. Interpreters is a problem. Interpreter course is a problem. Nobody joined the course is a problem. Nobody teaches the course properly is another problem. There is no interest in the problem. The government don't want to give me a post is a problem. There are so many different things. So when you say domain, 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 it's true. But like vastly when you go there, you see, I, we saw, for example, the impact for me was a, a, talking about interpreter guilt. When a person says, no, I can't come today for interpreting. And Deepak has a problem. Then I feel bad. Re, re, I should have gone. But there's no other, nobody else. But my family needs me. Or something I already booked. Some, you know, there is so many. There's such a desperate need for interpreters. Quality of interpreters, you correctly say, is not good enough. So it's a huge. It's not one issue here. You can't say this interpreter doesn't know how to go to court. It's true. But if he never goes, how he will learn? When only one person will go to court, then I must go to all the court cases in the country and Renuka will go all other court cases. Is that possible? So we all have to grow. And the deaf community also has to understand the interpreting problem. We are growing. You are growing. Let us grow together. Let us work together. Let us synchronize our growth and you know help each other, support each other, understand, first of all, each other's issues. Because we understand the deaf issue. But I don't think many times interpreters' issues are very much commonly understood. Other people don't understand. If the guy come out of the course, he doesn't know how to sign, is it his fault? When a deaf man comes out of a school, he can't read and write properly, is it his fault? Whose fault is it? Teacher's fault. So then the, the hearing interpreter comes out of the interpreting college, whose fault is it? Teacher's fault. But I can't say that, no, it is. Because deaf teachers are there. So we cannot say it's their fault. So then whose fault is it? You see, this is the thing. We have to understand the whole situation in a holistic way first. Before we go and say, you know, our interpreters do not know how to do this. They do not know how to do this. It's true. I'm not wrong. It's true. 100% you're right. They do not know. Today, we were talking about it. <laughs> Sorry, and, uh, today. We would just... Uh, 
Can we switch? Manisha, is the internet better now? Can you try? You were saying we should have education interpreting, court interpreting, medical interpreting, theater interpreting. There are so many domains, you know, interpreting we have to do. We can't. Who will do it? How will we do it? Sorry, I'll yes. take it for your time, yeah. but it had to be said. You have to understand the interpreter's problem as well. Yes, absolutely. I the all things comes from your own heart, you know. The Vasli conference, yes, we you have experienced such thing. But what about the India, India's perspective also? We need to encourage other people as well, you know, you and uh, to work on this area as well, right? Absolutely. If I can encourage many people, but if only two people join the course, I can't encourage anybody. What do I do? Yes, right. Perfect. So now we will be going ahead with the next question. So question anybody can answer for this question. So when we see at the international level, you know, the Vasily conference, you, you've been there. And yeah, there were interpreters and yes, you have shared your experience. But one question I would like to ask uh, related to the ethics of the interpreters, we have made the ethics. But do you think the ethics are quite similar or Vasily has more detailed ethics for the interpreters? What was your experience as comparing from the India and the Vasily one? So when we talk about the Vasily, their ethics, it's not about the Vasilis ethics you know we have the or every country have their own uh, ethics and they have made the ethics according to their own country and the education level about the qualification right and they have been working on it from since a uh, past couple of years so i think it's quite similar and about the they talk about the professionals of the interpreter about the accessibility i think these things are all similar so yes, we they talk about the hundred percent accessibility, and it should be, uh, it should be confidential. The interpreter has to be confidential, and you know they have to have formal clothes and the plain clothes. All I think the ethics are quite similar with Vasily and what the ethics we have. Nothing much different. Not much. Uh, difference we have seen. I think the ethics was quite similar when we talk about the India's ethics and the other international ethics. I think there would be a little differences we can see, uh, but about when we talk about the qualitative interpretation, you know, and we have domain when we are talking about the domain. So if there are legal interpreters and who are working in the academic one or in the education one, so these ways they are having their own groups. So all the legal interpreters or the academic one or the others interpreters, they have their own uh, ethics. They have created that. So, but, but in India, we have a one uh, bucket only, you know, and we have all of the ethics which are catering to all the domains here. So next time when we are creating a domain and when we are uh, separating it, you know, we need to create ethics related to that particular domain, whether it's related to the uh, legal one or the academic one or related to the health one, right? So that's how we will be creating ethics. Okay, it was quite clear and I understood as well. So one more question I would like to ask. So when we talk about the uh, you know, formal clothes for the interpreters. So do, do they talk about the skin color as well? Like if the person is a dark color person, they should wear bright color clothes or I mean something like that. Do they talk about that thing as well? Yeah, it's a good question, but uh, Rinko here, but in Vasily conference, there were interpreters as well. We saw that, you know, the clothes, uh, we didn't see that there were any different different colors the interpreters were wearing so, and we didn't ask that as well so all the interpreters they were having a black clothes everyone mostly interpreters and you know you know that they are mostly white people so they are wearing black color clothes and that's how it's matching their skin color as well 
so deepak here uh, i was just asking because you know there was a one person who has usher syndrome so uh, arun here is saying that if a person is a black person and wearing a black robe how we will go ahead with this one i was thinking about it we didn't see anybody doing it i was just wondering how it would work okay. uh, sorry deepak and both of you okay no problem okay so yeah so my point is here i was not exactly focusing on the skin color part but yeah i just wanted to know about that thing as well so i think uh, we are uh, arun have uh, already he is i mean more focusing on the india's perspective right and we have to create a different different buckets for all the domains and we are creating a vision as well right so we hopefully we will have the different different buckets and we will create the different domains and their ethics that hopefully gonna be happen in some time and we will be planning that as well you know and in for for india yeah if you think that yeah uh, i am so glad that yeah arun has explained all the things and renuka if you would like to add anything here so you asked a question earlier right the impact what what impact it had made on us there was there was a question as well which you asked uh, me so in vastly conference when we see the other people and in the wft conference as well there were only uh, the deaf interpreters on the stage there should there were always a deaf interpreter the hearing interpreter's job you know relaying the context that's the thing that's all the hearing interpreters was not on the stage and that was the bigger uh, i could say that that has impacted me that was a bigger impact which has created on me so if you have the deaf interpreters on the stage you know and the hearing interpreters is off the stage and voicing or maybe signing as well that has to be so smooth and the perfect one which actually representing a deaf presenters and that made me that was just wow and that was that created an impact over me that how the people were voicing you know they the interpreters they were voicing for the deaf presenters and that had to be so clear and smooth and you know the words and the vocabulary which they were using that was the highest one i mean that was so impressive for us to listen the vocabulary which they were using right while they while voicing for a deaf presenters so that was a great learning that we need to practice whenever a deaf presenter is there the interpreters need to work on their voicing skills as well and that is very much needed because for at that time you are representing a deaf presenters right and your voice is representing that so voicing skills need to be upgraded and we need to teach these and we need to mentor the interpreters for the voicing skills you know interpreters are very much comfortable the signing from voice to sign but when it comes from sign to voice all of the interpreters get hesitant while voicing so that's how they become under confident they don't get the vocabulary right vocabulary to uh, voice at that, that time signing is quite easy for people because that uh, somehow it's easier for them from listening a target uh, listening a language and then target language then converting into a sign language so people who are asli members we need to i think that we need to give a training so that people can get trained in voice in voicing and that's how they can upgrade their skills so this is our one of the aim of the asli to provide the training in the voicing skills so that yes we can't do it all the things at one time we need to prioritize the things right and people are busy we are getting work and interpreters are uh, most of the time they are really busy with the workshops and webinars we have all these things but yeah asli want to plan a workshop as well for the interpreter so that we can upgrade their skills and that's our main motto too and we want to uh, and i think mr arun would I have a point also. about uh, voicing which uh, zain told me years and years ago i never forgot and i remember 2007 in spain the president of vasli at that time elizabeth uh, was voicing and i came to her i said 
after she did this session and she voiced like i think 30 minutes straight and i met her i said my god will i ever voice like this she said i am coda and i am 65 so i have been doing this before you are born which means me before i was born she is already <laughs> voicing she was almost yeah 60 something 60 years so since but the 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 learning i found in that in that conference and even Durb, in durban as well everywhere i've met world class interpreters who are voicing at the world conference the other world the class of the world we call them the best of the best they also freak out oh my god i'm voicing oh my god i'm voicing oh my god that oh my god doesn't end at a world conference, the number one interpreter is also saying, oh my God, <laughs> because they are also not, you know, they have a new person, first of all, a new totally different person to work with and to read his presentation, talk to him beforehand. What are you saying? What are you doing? What is all this? La, 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 la. The preparation for voicing is huge. Huge at that level when you're presenting at a at academic level because you have to make sure that the deaf person sounds like a professional, and he used the vocabulary that he has used in his paper, the level at which he's signing, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But the key for interpreting, I want to say this to everybody who is here, interpreters and deaf people, the key, why is it easier to sign? Why? Because we know the spoken language. A hearing person knows the spoken language perfectly. Whether it's for English for me or uh, Hindi for me or Manisha or sort of want to do Bengali or English, whatever. We know the spoken language perfectly. We never make a mistake to hear it. We know exactly what is meant in the spoken language. Exactly. Our sign language receptive skill has to match your spoken language receptive skill. And our spoken language receptive skill is here. And our sign language skip receptive skill is down here somewhere. And this is this is why the voicing issue comes. Now, if I was to work with, for example, Narayanan, who is NAD president. Now, I worked with him. I met him every day for 20 years, three times. I know his sign perfect. Narayanan will say anything. I can voice for him anywhere. If I wake up in my sleep and he's signing, I can start speaking. Blah, 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 blah. Because I know him so well. I know a few deaf people so well. And their signs so well. I have no problem with that person. But if Deepak, whom I have not seen sign so much, starts signing and says, okay, voice for me. <laughs> and I've been doing for 30 years. You know. So even for Deepak to voice for you, I will be like, okay, what are you going to say? What did you say? Excuse me, let me ask him, what, what happened? <laughs> Because I do not know your signs, but your friend who lives with you, works with you, I do not know, Leon, maybe somebody who works with you every day, he says, huh, Deepak, yeah, what is it now? He will speak because he sees you every day all the time. He is used to you the way you sign. So our signing skill has to reach the auditory skill level. Then you will have perfect voicing. But people don't understand this. This is the, it's not about voicing. It's about understanding what the person is trying to say in the front of you. If you don't understand what he's saying, how can you voice? Simple. If somebody will speak Gujarati to me, can I sign for him? No, I do not know Gujarati. I don't understand what he says. So how can I sign? Not possible. So voicing is not about voicing. It's about understanding the one in front of you. Once you're understood fully, you can voice. Yes, absolutely. Yes. Understood. So I think uh, all you have answered all the questions, but there is one last question which is still left. Any of you, I think so. Do you have any, I mean, uh, are you planning something for deaf interpreters? I mean, are you going to take any step to work towards deaf interpreters? So you're asking about deaf interpreters? 
yeah i mean so for your next step for i mean you will be working towards the voicing skills and the interpreting skills for the interpreters we know that but for the deaf interpreters are you going to plan something for them as well would you be starting something training for the deaf interpreters uh i spoke to a number of deaf interpreters who are possibly available to come and train deaf interpreters in our country and uh, they are willing to come so i also spoke to alim who is head of here a million and he said he thinks in india maximum one or two people can actually handle deaf interpreting because deaf interpreting is requires a much higher level of uh, understanding of the world and knowledge themselves will have to have severe amount of knowledge which they can recall and bring forward and understand and share so that will take some time for them to develop into that level of skilling hopefully our interpreters supporting deaf people in colleges and so on will help them to understand so many different topics world topics subject matter etc etc so that they can deaf people themselves have because the deaf people you have as deaf interpreters they are degree holders they are masters holders they are very very well spoken well educated well you know uh, knowledgeable and informed people and this is the kind of people who require to be a deaf interpreter so because i can package it and give it to you but if you don't understand what i'm packaging you can't deliver so we're going to start with working with deaf relay interpreter which is where all this started already 30 years 40 years 50 years ago in the 70s they realized that courts require interpreters who understand deaf people who are not socialized as deaf people and do not know good sign language so they are don't sign properly they are all over the place so the deaf person understands that person and then that deaf person changes the sign language into a proper sign that the interpreter understands and that goes forward to the judge to the lawyer etc etc so it's called relay interpreting now deaf interpreting sort of up is relay interpreting deaf interpreting is only the past i think this is the first for me vastly conference the first time that there's deaf interpreter on stage in 2011 this was not the case there were no deaf interpreters on stage in 2011 i know what happened in 15 and 19 i do not know but in 11 it was not there so this 12 years for the world interpreting conference there's only been it's it's less than 12 years old so i to as i said earlier it's an evolution everywhere else education for the deaf has evolved tertiary education has evolved college education university education has evolved and they can now pick up people and train them as deaf interpreters and they want to work as a deaf interpreter there is money to be made they are able to pay a salary to a deaf interpreter do we have that facility here in india today not yet in the hearing interpreters are stuck without work without jobs wandering around wondering why they spent two years in a course then they want a rci certificate now the dtisl course is a good course but then those people don't have degrees they have not any independent education and knowledge and so on so it will take some time we will do but definitely we want to start working on deaf relay interpreters definitely we should do that so that is one very important thing we should start doing when i spoke to ali he said no india we don't have people with potential it will take some time maybe 10 years so that's what he said uh some people maybe earlier than that but one or two is we're i'm not when i talk about interpreters and anything else i'm not talking about one or two people we are 1.4 billion people you will find one surely somewhere or two also you will find maybe you will even find five god only knows where they are but you may find them but if you going to start doing interpreting on a scale and use deaf interpreters on scale you need to find hundreds of them we don't even have hundreds of interpreters for our entire country the islrtc list of a level b level c level and dti and dsle from 2001 till today the total amount is not even 600 people 600 people we have trained in 22 years 22 years 600 people you know in korea today today in korea 
this year, 7,800 people are learning to be interpreters today. The enrollment is 7,800 in South Korea this year. And they're learning sign language. Some will go further to interpreting, but sign language learners, hearing sign language learners today is 7,800 people in South Korea with their miserable population of what if not even, I don't think they have 100 million people there. And with 1.4 billion, check up, we have 75, maybe 100 interpreters in class today, maybe, maybe, I do not know. Disley will have, uh, Disley in uh, ISRTC has about 70, 75. I told you, Alia Bajang has two. Bombay said they want to close because there's nobody there coming. Hyderabad is closed already. Nish will have another 2025. 100, 125 people are learning to be interpreters today. The deaf community has to really, really do a lot of advocacy work and demand interpreters. I made a, a channel on Instagram called RPWD for Deaf. About RPWD says there, you can ask for barrier free communication in any hospital you go to, but nobody doing it. And they will never ask for interpreters. So if you want interpreters, first hearing interpreters, everything is an evolutionary plan. <clears throat> but deaf relay, definitely we have to yeah. do We have to do it. Yes, absolutely, absolutely. So the last question I would like to ask now from, so you both are ASLI members, right? Who would like, who is the Asli members? Asli India is a member. Yes. So you of both course. are Asli, Asli members, right? Both. No, no. Association of Sign Language Interpreters, the sign is for India. Okay. Asli India is a member of Vasli since 2007. We have been members for 16 years of WASL. So you you are connected with them. Okay, that's Not clear. Connected. We are, so the, we are uh, national uh, members. We are national members of WASL. So, uh, but Deepak is asking, are you uh, as a individual you are a member or as a Ashley you are a member of what? Organization is a member. I have sent him the certificate and the email from them. I do not know why he is asking this question. Yes, so uh, uh, yeah, I think you have just is, answered. Ashley yeah. is the member. Arun Rao, I am not individually a member. I am individual member of WFD but not Vasli. WFD member, individual member, yes. You know, Vasli member is the organization called Asli, is a member of Vasli, yes. I think Renuka may be an individual member. Yeah, 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 Dr. Renuka, I am a Vasli member. I am, yes. Plus, I am, uh, you like the Asli? is also a national member of Vasli. Yeah, we have been a uh, national member since quite some time. So that's really great, Asli being an organization member of uh, Vasli. But I just wanted to understand that uh, before the South Korea, uh, you know, uh, Vasli conference, I'm talking about the previous uh, WFD conference in Paris, was ASLI there or was there some other interpreting organization representing India? I did not go to France and neither did Renuka, no. We did not go. But was, whether go to the conference or don't go to the conference. Sorry, both signing, both signing. Sorry, Arun is also talking and Dr. Renuka is also signing. So, yes. We are Vasli members, but the France conference, we did not go. Asli, uh, from Asli, we were not there. We missed in, uh, actually. So other interpreting association was there? So I guess, yeah, perhaps. I think, yes, yes, they did. Yeah, they did. But we missed. So uh, this year, they weren't able to go and we were there. Why are we talking about anybody else?
Yeah, because there was a little confusion between the two organizations, which is which. But yeah, because you see the confusion is because in India, we have so many deaf associations, right? And uh, you, it works as some of them are members of AIFD, some of them are uh, members of NED. So I was just trying to understand that uh, both different interpreting organizations having different goals. It's a little uh, confusing, you know, for the deaf community, we don't actually know the affiliation part of okay, let me clarify this properly to the country. For example, uh, when, as Asli said, uh, Asli is a national member of Basli. Let me clarify very simply. WFD has national, what they call ordinary members. So from one country, only one ordinary member can join. In our country, WFD, the ordinary member is AIFD. Which means they go to the General Assembly, they have voting rights, they could be somebody nominate them to be any board member, etc., etc. AIFD is the organization that WFD has a as an ordinary member and only one ordinary member per country is allowed. Yes, okay. yes. And WFD has also a category called associate member. Because many countries have multiple organizations for the deaf. So any organization of the deaf can pay their dues and become an associate member of WFD. And they have to be associate members. They have no voting rights. They can attend the General Assembly, but they cannot vote. They cannot do anything, but they can watch. Observe. Yes, that, yes, that's right. This is yeah, WFD. That's what, is the same uh, way the interpreting association also works? This is WFD. Now, Vasli is an organization that is an association of professional organizations. So there is only national membership. And from one country, any number of national members may be there. UK has two. Malaysia has two. India has two. Other countries, Japan has two. Europe, some countries have two. So it's not a, some strange thing that is happening. And they should not be like only one person has to be there. Anybody any organization of interpreters with the goal of improving interpreting and having interpreters in the organization is a is a is a is an organization which is registered and so forth has a legal identity and they can join vastly as a professional organization. We're not representing people, we are representing our professional members. Whereas the AIFD is supposed to represent entire Indian deaf community, is supposed to be represented by AIFD. That is the responsibility given to ordinary members of WFD. They represent the deaf community of that country. Right? I represent, or rather, I should not say I, I should say Dr. Renuka represents, as president of ASLI, she represents our members at the WASDI conference. So we, as ASLI India, are members of WASLI. Since we started, 2007, since membership was opened in 2007, we have been members, 16 years, we have been members of WASP. Now, any other organization being a member, going, coming, not going, not coming, this is not to do with us. I can answer for myself. We are members since 2007. And when we can, we go to conference. If we can, we can go, we can go. Otherwise, we get mails, we communicate yeah. with them, we have friends, we have this and this. I communicate with other people. I've been I'm in touch with the Filipino Association, the Malay Association, the American Association. I just wrote an article for the for Asli UK. Asli UK and Asli India have the same name and two different countries. Correct? I'm in touch with so many different interpreters from all over the world. I wrote an article for Ashley UK. They just went out. It'll be printed on September 1. You'll have the printout. 
the article, the magazine article on Vasudhi is coming out next month. So it's like this. So it's it's not as if anybody should be confused. I hope it's very clear. Vasli is a member of Vasli. Dr. Renuka personally is a member of Vasli as well. I am personally a member of WFD, but we are members of Vasli as Asli since 2007. And I was on the board of Vasli since 2002. 2002, 2007, uh, I was on the board. And then, of course, the election happened and whatever happened, happened. So now we are clear. Yes, no, right. yes, yes, of course, of course. There had been this uh, confusion, but this explanation definitely clarifies how uh, the national membership um, works. Thank you. Hopefully the deaf community understands. Hope so also. <laughs> Perfect. Yes, yes. Right. So we hope um, that this was a great session. All the questions have been taken care of. If there's anything, any lasting comments you would like to add? If not, uh, let us just I see. I would like to say let one people... thing. Uh, and that is, we talked about interpreters and interpreting and Vasli and so on in different countries and how the evolution of interpreting profession happened and so on. Alongside the interpreting evolution, or rather I should say before the interpreting evolution, the deaf community also was evolving. You understand? So they have evolved together. Deaf community becomes stronger, interpreting community becomes more professional. Deaf community becomes stronger. Interpreters, they, they require, they say, no, you must be more professional. You must have court. You must have academics. You must have health. So all this goes parallel with deaf community. The other the thing I have found in India is a deaf persons in India generally are not clear on the role of an interpreter. Now, what am I supposed, if I'm your interpreter, what am I supposed to do? Am I supposed to bring your coffee for you? Am I supposed to come if you call me after half an hour and say, I want you to come here in half an hour? Is it a possible thing for me to do? Do I have no other thing to do other except to follow you around? So there are many misunderstandings of people that happen and they say ethics, 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 etc., etc. But you don't understand what is an interpreter's role? What is a deaf person's role? How do we interact together? How do we have mutual respect? I respect you, yes. You respect me, yes. Then we can progress together, yes. This works. But the trouble is, due to training, interpreters are not properly uh, replying to people, perhaps is possible. Like you said, you know, they're not following the code of ethics or the code of conduct, whatever it may be. Yes. At the same time, for every one of those, I can tell you enough and more of deaf people, you know, mistreating, abusing, and uh, having unrealistic expectations of an of a interpreter. So I think both sides have to learn what is an interpreter, what is his role, what will he do or she do, what will not they do, what cannot they, what they cannot do. You know, I have been asked so many times by deaf people, what shall I do? Is it my job to tell him what is to be done? No. I said, do whatever you want to do. Is it not helping me? No, I'm not helping you. It's not my job is not to help you. My job is to communicate for you. So also deaf people understand what is an interpreter, how an interpreter will be treated. This is an important learning. We had a webinar two weeks ago and Akhil Chinoy from Aish was there and he said, I never realized this is going on. <laughs> we must have a sensitization program. He said it himself. He's one of our experts. His expert committee of Asli has a deaf expert committee. We have some of the best minds, deaf people, leaders in the deaf community as our experts. And we listen to them. We invite them for all our programs. And they are very much part of what we do. And we hope to work with working together, we'll create a good document and a good meeting and a good maybe webinar, open webinar to everybody 
and talk about these things in a serious manner. Sorry, just let us switch interpreters. I think we're done. Late, actually. <laughs> Akil is from Ish. Ah, yeah, that's clear. Great, fantastic. So that ecosystem, right? Absolutely. Deaf people grow and the interpreters grow together. That's a parallel. Uh, Those are a vital part of the ecosystem. Interpreters. Perfect. Perfect. Absolutely. So we are done with the questions. Now, uh, time for the audience members. If there are any questions, just let us see if there are any. If not, we can end the session. Seems like um, actually, I have to go, so maybe okay, five minutes. Avinash, who uh, your question is to? I think it's to both of them. So, Dr. Renuka and Arun, so hopefully you are uh, looking at Avinash. Yes. If uh, whosoever uh, raises their hand, we will spotlight them and they can answer. All right, let me just introduce myself. I'm Avinash Rana. That's my sign name. I'm from Chandigarh. Um, just want to know, uh, it was a question like the South Korea uh, Vasli experience, meeting deaf and hearing interpreters, mingling, uh, and, uh, you know, from all those experiences, what did you think that the Indian community, Indian interpreting community needs to change or the deaf community, you know, what do you think is the requirement, requirement for change within both the communities? So either of you, Dr. Renuka or Arun can take this. Arun? I think interpreting education has to improve. Okay, sorry, sorry. Are you signing? <laughs> no, you were not on screen, so I wasn't sure if you are signing. So I just signing and voicing at the same time. Sorry. Yeah, so let me just voice properly and just speak. I think interpreting I training, sorry, whatever you are comfortable with. Interpreting training has to improve. And the deaf community has to also understand more and more about interpreters and their role in their lives. Mm, yeah, yeah. So you're meaning, uh, how many years do you think it would take? Because Korea, you know, uh, maybe they're way ahead of us. Uh, and what happens is every batch, you know, maybe, you know, we are not doing well. How many years do you think it will take for us to get to a good level? When you have proper faculty teaching properly, and when you have deaf leaders workshopping and talking and discussing and conferencing and so on, and learning and evolving themselves, and it will not take a long time. But the deaf have to advocate and say, yes, we have to have an education. Give us education. We want to go to colleges. We want to go to colleges. We have to have education. Every single university in India has, they call, equal opportunity cell. That is funded by University Grants Commission. If you can go to any college and join the college, they must provide you interpreters. It is in the law. It is in the UGC charter. But nobody goes and asks for interpreters. If you don't ask for interpreters, how do you get it? When you have a demand for interpreters and people getting college job for interpreting, then interpreter also will say, yes, I'm getting a job. I can get a job. I can work. If nobody asks for interpreters and nobody needs interpreters, then why interpreters become an interpreter? You say, hey, but yeah, let me go and become an IT fellow or something else or sell pakodas or whatever you want to do. So evolution depends on our own action, social action. Social evolution doesn't come in a time frame. There is no time frame for it. 
Can you say it will happen in six months or it will happen in 65 years? Who knows? It depends on the people. If people want it, it can happen tomorrow morning. If it will never happen, it will never happen at all. Absolutely. I think, uh, Arun, you should, uh, you know, really get into, uh, you know, pushing these points and uh, really ensuring that hearing people understand these things, right? So what? Hearing people. I think deaf people must understand. So I cannot go to the government and say, Jim, I want to, you should have more interpreters. They say, who are you? I'm an interpreter. They said, you're asking for your own job. Deaf people have to ask for interpreters. Then the government will come to me and say they want interpreters. How can I go and say, give me interpreter? They say, yeah, you're coming for your own money. Get out of my office. Deaf people must ask. I want interpreters. I want interpreters. I want interpreters. A strong deaf community will build a strong interpreting community. An interpreter cannot go and say, give, I want a job as interpreter. They'll say, you are coming here for money. Get out of here. They won't listen to me. They listen to deaf people. Is it deaf people? What is this? What is this? Oh, I don't have an interpreter. Oh, then oh, call the interpreter. Where is the interpreter? Then we will have interpreter. Then it will happen. Demand creates supply. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Really, really good. So the it's like a canon. Anand, uh, Arun, that's what you are, you know. So AK-47 are the deaf people, but you are the canon. You're the real deal. So, but yes, it has to be the team. We have to work in the team. All right. So we have the next question, please. Thank you, Avinash. Can we take the next uh, person? So, uh, happy, I think you know me. Uh, I'm Ravi. We have, we have met earlier in Deaf Pay Foundation. So it's been a nine years I've been teaching, right? And there are hearing people. Uh, hello, Arun. I hope uh, you can see me, right? Okay, perfect. So it's been nine years and uh, I have been... Uh, I I was teaching earlier, but now I am working with the railway sector. So when I seeing other students, there were hearing people as well. When they got the certification, when they are studying the uh, special education, you know, B. Ed. in H. I. They become the uh, special educator, and uh, th there was a principal who were asking me that I want to apply, and uh, sorry, there was a one person who want to apply for a job. And they said that we want to have Ravi in a school. And there were teachers who were asking me that uh, they wanted to, they, there were some students who wanted to learn some subjects. Sorry, Saurabh, could you comprehend? Yeah, yeah. So, okay, so, uh, Ravi is saying that uh, school, the principal would inform me and call me for reviewing this person. And in front of me, this person couldn't sign. He couldn't teach. Uh, but these guys have the topmost certification. They are learning at NIH. So, you know, how could how would they justify this? No experience, no able, no ability to communicate and sign. So, yeah, if there's something you could say. I'll... Thank you. Thank you, Ravi. Thank you. It's a great, great question. Really love this question. Perfect. Okay, so till 2000, since NIH had started, till 2000, there was no sign language name in the institution. Then they 2001, 2001, they started A, B, C level, nine month course. That time we all fought and said, at that time I was in the syllabus review committee of the BN. And we said, your course is for two years. And only 10 hours is dedicated to communication. But deaf people's biggest problem is they cannot communicate. How will you do this? You must put 30 hours of sign language. Uh, sorry, three months of sign language here. 
They said, no, too much. They said, okay, you put one month of sign language here. So they said, okay, fine, we'll put 60 hours or 50 hours, something like this. Then we they fought again. NAD was fighting for this for a long time. 2007, they changed it, became 90 hours. Again, they changed it, became 220 hours. And do you know, since 2007, they are saying we have no teachers to teach sign language. Since 16 years, they said the same reason. So RCI expert committee, who made the change in the syllabus, they are responsible to create teachers. They should make a course and say, okay, this is a teaching, sign language teachers course. You please join this course and become teacher. You get a job in the college to teach the B.Ed. students. They didn't do this. When you come for inspection to RCI and meet Deepak, and Deepak is head of the college, he says, oh, I don't have teacher, I say, I sell teacher. You say, okay, no problem, this is fine. And you stamp it and sign it. Anyway, certificate is given to everybody without learning one subject. Without learning one subject, not yes, clear yesterday, 16 that years, is. 16 years this is happening. This is why I have, we are preparing a court case yes. against RCI now. We are right now preparing this court case that why can they issue certificates for 16 years without any change and nobody is planning even to hire teachers. I wrote to the secretary about it. I wrote to the secretary and said, this is happening. What are you going to do about it? They don't do it. So somebody has to go and file in the court and say, they are cheating the deaf community. They are cheating them. If I go to engineering college and miss one subject, can they give me a certificate? Is it possible? They will not give you. But sign B Ed, no problem. It's fine. Why? Are they deaf for Goli Maro? It's a shame. It's a shame for us. So this is the answer to your question. <clears throat> yeah. But, you know, there were, I, I wanted to have a clarity on it. The, the, if there would be any organization and... If you have a different question, somebody else will come. It's two people Sorry. waiting and I have to go. Yeah. It's 10 you can PM. go ahead with the another I'm point. living now in Australia and now it is 10 p.m. So, <laughs> please, one more question and I'm going to leave. Sure, sure. We will have one last question. Ravi here. Thank you so much, Arun. Yes, we can have one more question. Yes, Akansha. Hello, hello, everyone. Uh, it's so glad that I could learn from Dr. Renuka and Mr. Arun, to whom you would like to ask question, to both of them, uh, Mr. Arun and Dr. Renuka. So you have been, uh, I mean, trying your best. It's been, you have been working from so long time, but I have one, one doubt. I think we are missing Arun. I can't see Arun here. Yes, he, he can see you. He's He has just turned off his video. So I want to ask, I mean, in your, uh, I, I have wanted to know that I am a young deaf woman right now. And I've seen there are new interpreters, but I see a one challenge in education sector, you know, if you can help me out in this area. So when you when we are learning, you know, uh, I've been trying to learn the mainstream setup. So I've been asking for the interpreter. They said that only one deaf person, so we can have only one interpreter, or maybe not required, right? So how I can answer in that situation? Because they say that I'm only a one deaf student. So in NIHH in Mumbai, you know, I asked them to have the interpreter. They said, yes, we can have one interpreter. But the interpreter he said that I don't have time. And I tried to connect with a lot of interpreters. But they have, they are certified, right? But why are they are not ready to interpret for me in the education setup? 
i am not understanding this thing second thing whenever uh, i don't want to waste time you know i want to get the interpreter so that i can study well so from uh, but we don't get the interpreters interpreters are not available that's the biggest challenge i am facing and i have to suffer a lot so yeah now the uh, we can have i mean on even one interpreter is getting difficult is tough to get one interpreter i want to know i mean how you have a lot of years of experience if you can uh, let me know i mean how i can uh, be helped in this area yes i will answer you don't worry for that mm. so in your experience there are lot of deaf students as well who have experienced a uh, similar mm. things as well and what i have seen in the interpreters area i mean in when we talk about the universities and the education setup and you know we need to have two interpreters whether we have a one deaf student or or more than that so one interpreter can't interpret the entire day you know that would become difficult and uh, that the receptive work and the interpreting skills it's quite difficult so it's a you know cognitive uh, thing which which a uh, cognitive load where uh, the interpreters has to work on it and so with the two interpreters it gets easier and they have to switch in every 20 and 15 minutes right and that's how they create a interpreters team but the college they have to pay to the two interpreters and that's how they feel difficult and that's the thing that what they can see the other area and i understand your concern here as well and also uh, we don't have much qualified interpreter the student uh, the interpreters who might be able to interpret in the education setup and also for 3 years or 4 years interpreters can't give you a commitment right so that's we i mean that depend on individual their own opinion and we are not uh, we can't demand over it right that could be the person interpreter's choice whether some people would like to commit some interpreters would not be able to commit but yeah i understand your concern I just... we'll see how things will get better one more thing can i add sorry sorry that was um, if you actually do want to have uh, you know you can connect with them personally have more conversations like this is a great opportunity you know i had really have some issues so i was thinking we can uh, you know together find some solutions i, so think, I think with uh, sorry yeah i think we need to close or maybe we have to raise hands okay uh, happy want to i want to add, add something to what renuka was saying in answer to akansha's question we are back to demand and supply when 35 people join the college and they say we want interpreters or one person join the college and they want interpreter this takes this is what i said in the beginning evolution you to start with one person then five people then one person will tell everybody no no i joined the college they gave me interpreter next year five will join then they will all get interpreters again if they don't get they will fight for it you think everything came free to people in america no it didn't come free they had to fight for it also they have to fight for their rights they had to fight for interpreting they had to fight for uh, accessibility they had to fight for everything they have to get and the deaf community in india since you sit over here drink tea and blame the government and then say are interpreters barrier hard problem blah blah, blah and so this is not how we going to get interpreters you have to go to the court you have to go to the government the thousand people must write everybody and say where is the interpreters we have rpwd i made a instagram uh, channel called rpwd for deaf go look for it find it watch what the rpwd says about access about sub barrier free access about support about interpreters about language about advocacy everything is there you can see some are from deaf people some are from me you can see it understand how to progress in your in our lives because until the deaf community gets up like akansha correctly says 
I want to finish in four years. I'm not waiting here for nine years to do my degree. I have to finish the damn degree. Then there's no interpreter here. Who shall she go to? Go to the court. The act, the law says you are required to provide interpreter. So provide. Finished. No long stories are going to be told to anybody. You have to fight in the courthouse. You have to fight in the government house. You have to fight in the ministry. You have to fight. I look young and handsome like you, Deepak, 30 years ago. Now look at my condition. I've been fighting 30 years. You're the Gandhi for the interpreting community. I don't know what Gandhi... I'm... I don't know about Gandhi, but I know one thing for sure. We have to fight. If we don't fight, nothing happens. Perfect. All right. Really sorry. Sorry, I know there are questions, but but hope you all can connect with Asli. And um, they have their own Instagram handle. Please, uh, you know, find them out. So with this, we come to an end about the Vasli 2023 conference and the interpreting community in India. So much uh, impact, so much learning. Would like to really thank Dr. Renuka and Arun there were so many important points and topics we touched upon. Plus, we would like to thank the sign language interpreters, Saurav and Manisha. They uh, took turns and ensured that they were providing access for the deaf community and also voicing and uh, translating sign. Also, the admin and the back team who were doing the spotlighting and all the Zoom work. And most importantly, want to thank all the participants for being here and watching. One important thing I would also like to add before you all uh, leave this meeting. So the uh, the topic today was Vasli 2023. I would just like to quickly uh, inform you that there is Project Discovery. Project Discovery, uh, I think recently on the Here a Million Instagram cha uh, channel, we launched a video. It's a solution platform. For example, deaf people, you know, uh, the doorbell, we have the door light. Similarly, uh, deaf people, you know, we use rear view mirrors. And there are a lot of solutions for uh, the kind of barriers persons with disabilities have, right? So there is a form for you to apply. And I think next month in the month of September, it's a competition basically. And uh, first, second, third uh, people, I mean, there'll be prizes if your solutions are chosen to be, uh, you know, really good. So you can do work in a team. You can uh, send uh, videos, their project discovery application, as well as the information about this competition has been uh, provided. Barrier free with solution. That's the hashtag handle. So please check out this video. And please also um, follow Project Discovery's work. Thank you so much. Again, thank you everyone, all the participants for joining, as well as Dr. Renuka and Arun, sign language interpreters and the backup team. Thank you, thank you, thank you.